Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Craig hunt -Bretch, the ACE Vice Chair for Future of Consultancy. I'd like to welcome you all to the final episodes in this Future of Consultancy webinar series, which has been running throughout May and June. Uh, in previous webinars, we've explored new business models, procurement, and the future of the workplace. And today, we're pleased to share with you um, a presentations on connecting technology to outcomes. Obviously, a very important and hot topic at the moment. Um, these webinars also feed into our Future of Consultancy campaign work at the ACE. So today, I'm delighted to welcome two special guests. Joining us is Richard Shannon from Mott McDonald and Dr. Marcia Balpani from MACE. Um, after each speaker has presented, there will be plenty of time for questions and answers. I'll get to how you can send questions for the Q&A in the next slide. So, um, repeat listeners will know all of this, but it's just good to remind everyone. Uh, this webinar is best experienced through headphones, which will help to cut out the background noise. If you turn off your microphone, you won't hear yourself breathing into the headphones as well, which is really useful. To ask questions, please go to the questions tab in your control panel. That's the sidebar with the controls on the right of your screen. We will try and answer as many questions as possible, but don't worry if we don't get time today, we'll also answer any others we haven't had time to cover in the webinar. So please, please send your questions in. Feel free to send them during the webinar. You don't have to wait until the Q&A session has, uh, has started. And don't worry if you miss anything today, we will be uploading this to our website in the next few days. So if you want to listen again, you can. So for the presentation, I'd now like to hand over to Richard uh, to start the presentation. Richard, over to you. Great, thanks very much indeed. So yeah, hello everybody. I'm Richard Shannon, Group Digital Delivery Director at uh, Mott McDonald. And um, I've been involved in supporting um, AC projects over, over the years really. Um, uh, used to head up um, a BIM transformation group when you know there was a lot of work needed to do in that area and in the last couple of years this has really moved on to a wider digital transformation group where we're looking at um, the changes um, relating to digital transformation that are affecting members and, and what it means for them and their businesses and the and the opportunities um, ahead and the purpose of our group really is to provide useful information uh, for members to support members, um, you know, as they confront the changes ahead, uh, trying to embrace everything from large organisations, you know, like my own, down to um, smaller organisations, um, maybe niche organisations, uh, where sometimes they're even more agile and can change more quickly. Um, so uh, the work's ongoing and it's connected uh, strongly into the future of consultancy work stream um, with, with Craig and, and the future of consultancy board. Um, where we're providing key inputs around um, innovation um, in all of its um, senses, really, innovation in terms of product, service, um, business model, technology, um, so that um, we can help people see the way forward. So uh, that's a bit of background about me and, and my work with the ACE, and specifically here, we're going to talk about, um, you know, connecting technology to, to um, uh Two outcomes. So, if you can go on to the first slide, please, um, uh, Chetna. Um, so, this is the way that, that I like to look at things, um, and certainly the way we've adopted within 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 Mott McDonald, the idea of um, an information value chain, really. And to me, the, the way that the future is decided is by people making decisions. And then, for those of us in in our industry, you know, we have a key role to play. Um, in making better decisions, which will drive, you know, more sustainable outcomes in terms of um, uh, economic, um, uh, social, and environmental performance, and kind of we are the ones really in the infrastructure industry, along with some other core industries, that actually have the responsibility for making those decisions to to enable the better future that that everybody wants. So these decisions are fundamental, and they're made right down through organisations from the top you know, the executive of a large organization, right down to people who might be, you know, selecting a component or deciding 
you know, which is the best solution to meet a particular um, demand or project that they've, they've got in front of them. So decision making, you know, I place as, as, as kind of central really to, um, to a sort of sustainable future. And then, so what enables better decisions to be made? Um, you know, if only we had all of the information relevant to that decision kind of in front of us, um, then we would make a better decision. And, and it's clear in the context of, let's just take sustainability, for example, that if we really had accurate, reliable, believable information in front of us about the um, impact of um, our day-to-day -day activities now and over the last number of years, then uh, we probably wouldn't have done the same thing. Um, but even today, um, we don't have that information. Um, so the criticality of good information to make good decisions kind of runs really deep down through um, through the kind of um, the challenge that we have in the industry going forward. Um, so it comes down to what is feeding that information, and this is the connection to to technology. Um, we know that there's an awful lot of data out there, um, data within our own organizations, data within client organizations, other open data sources that are increasingly available um, and able to be integrated through technology. Um, so um, the amount of data is ever increasing and it's probably not really where the problem lies. Um, uh, it's really in what we do with that um, with that data, how we integrate the data, how we make sense of it, how we use technology to um, analyze, uh, to assess, to compare, um, and then to output decision support information in a way that the person in the role, in their role, in making that decision on that day, receives it clearly um, in a way that's relevant to the decision in front of them, um, and in a way that is credible, believable, verifiable, or at least the degrees of uncertainty um, are apparent to the decision maker. So, um, for me, technology and the selection of technology is, you know, a core component in linking this huge availability of, of data um, to um, better decisions, which is what is ultimately going to drive um, better outcomes. Um, so if we go on to the next one, um, Chetna, um, you know, just a little bit more about the, the context, really, um, the commercial context um, and the opportunity. Um, so obviously, you know, all members, probably all participants in this call, um, you know, have um, a job to do, they have a living to make, um, and so they need to make sure that um, both what they're offering now and what they're planning to develop in the future is aligned to to the clients. So client and end customer requirements and expectations are are fundamental. But certainly from my perspective, and you know, we've got a lot of clients across the world in in Mott McDonald across all infrastructure sectors. You know, we are seeing clients' expectations changing. Um, you know, it's much more looking towards what are the outcomes, what are their customers wanting, what is their proposition, and their propositions themselves are starting to be adjusted to take account of you know, the um, the challenges that face them. And it, a lot of it comes back to this idea of sustainable outcomes. So, you know, the, the customer and client expectations are developing. They are not very sophisticated yet in asking for information in an organized way. Um, you know, as many of you will know, even over the years, you know, client briefs have never been, you know, necessarily the greatest. And we have to help them to, to put those briefs together. And nowadays, um, we have to help them to really think through what information do they need to be delivered to them in order to enable them to um, to do what they need to do to build, to own, to operate, um, to repurpose um, uh, whatever the, uh, application they have across the life cycle. So um, clients and, and, and customer requirements and expectations are changing, social demand is changing, and we need to help our clients to, to respond to that. And increasingly, this focus on understanding and connecting and perhaps being able to measure the impact on social, economic, and environmental outcomes is is fundamental. So when we look at technology, you know, we're interested in technologies that will actually pro potentially provide, you know, a through life model um, of an asset and its performance, um, so that we can tell what impact is it actually having, so we can learn from that and improve it. Um, so markets are developing. There are new market opportunities in these areas. Um, so we need to understand them and address them. Um, and those of us that come from a traditional consulting background, which is probably the majority of people on the call, 
you know, we also need to really be prepared to deal with um, evolving and potentially disruptive competition, which we see coming from many directions. Um, you know, in the world of information advisory, we see competition coming in from, you know, typical management consultancy type organizations, big four, um, but, you know, they have a lot of capability to crunch data. Um, they don't necessarily have the deep domain expertise that we have in understanding our sectors, um, understanding infrastructure and, and understanding clients, um, but they are coming in. We find the technology suppliers themselves coming in with a sort of a quasi consultancy offer where they might have a little bit of a consultancy um, bolt on to help to pull people towards um, their software. Um, but ultimately the financial model for them is always going to be subscription and, 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 and software as a service. Um, but they do take some potential um, revenue away from consultants um, because they might try to go in directly and just persuade um, clients to spend all their money on the technology before they've actually figured out what they want to do with it. Um, uh, so that is a challenge. Um, and then we have um, challenges coming in and we see this very actively in our organization from um, small new startups who are coming in with niche digital solutions for particular challenges and problems, whether it be one little piece of the design process or one little piece of project management or, you know, typically quite niche um, modeling applications and so on. Um, but we need to be very aware of that work because um, what they do bring often is a degree of automation and efficiency, which enables things to be done in much less time than we traditionally would spend um, doing it the old way. Um, and this is also related to a shift in business models where, you know, the hourly rate approach, whether it is accumulated up into a, a fixed fee or not, the idea that things are based on hours spent rather than technology deployed um, is something that's very much connected to um, uh, the future business models that Craig already mentioned. And, and, and what are the enablers? Well, I've mentioned, you know, the huge abundance of, of, of um, data um, and the need to connect it to value. Um, there's a big drive and a lot of technology which enables information to be better structured um, and here the technology is not really the blocker it's really the organizations um, that tend to fall behind in terms of behaviors um, when it comes to um, well-structured um, uh, information and information-centric enterprises technology is increasingly becoming connected um, so we're seeing um, that the ability to move data around different technologies um, and open secure connections are developing quickly. Um, so, um, you know, the idea, you know, for those of you who might be using tools like Autodesk, you go back, you know, 10 years and Autodesk plan was to sort of have a little bit of everything in one big Autodesk corral and make it hard to take data out of it um, to try and get everyone to buy all their products. This is a model which is really not succeeded, um, thankfully, um, and people are now actually looking at, you know, open exchange of information um, and then increase um, application of automation. There's a lot of it coming through um, and the challenge for the organizations um, is um, what does that mean for, for people? Um, certainly the proposition that we adopt in Mott McDonald um, is that, um, you know, this is uh, that the machine a well-organized application of machine technology um, should actually enhance the um, human capability um, and uh, liberate people to do what they do best, um, which machines can't do in terms of you know, intuitive behavior, collaborative behavior, um, decision-making skills, which, um, you know, maybe one day machines will take it all over, but that's certainly not the case now. Um, so how do we actually look at um, the interrelationship between automation machine plus human to give an ultimately uh, better outcome. So um, that's a kind of landscape, um, certainly the how we're seeing things in, in Mott McDonald to share with you. Um, I'm not the hands-on technology um, practitioner um, or expert in use of all these tools. I tend to be working, um, looking at things across more of a sort of conceptual um, and organizational level. So. Um, it's great that we've got uh, Marcia with us on the call because um, she's going to be able to take us a little bit more into how do you apply this kind of thinking to the actual selection um, of technologies 
which will um, enable you to work through this value chain and ultimately connect technology to to outcomes. Um, so, uh, uh, Matia, I'll um, hand over to you. Okay, thank you. So, good afternoon, everyone. So, I'm Marcel Pani, and I'm senior BIM advisor uh, at MACE. So, for um, all of you that maybe they don't know what this uh, acronym BIM means, is a uh, building information modeling, and uh, is uh, is part of the digital transformation. And also in in UK, it has been um, you know a, a push on uh, implementing building information modeling, especially in the in the public uh, sector. Um, so I I'm also. Uh, part of the AC group uh, uh, that uh, Richard uh, mentioned regarding digital transformation and really uh, the group is to help you as uh, members uh, uh, in your digital journey so as part of this webinar and the activities and also that we have been doing in the past year uh, and uh, is, is to support you in this journey it is not always straightforward um, I'm also involved in, in other activities, uh, um, ambassador of the UK BIM Alliance uh, and also working on terminology uh, for the BIM dictionary. And um, I also uh, am part of uh, at European level on standardization. On, on, on this topic, in particular on the level of information need. It is a quite important uh, topic that also Richard uh, mentioned before. Um, so it is um, is key to define which are the information that uh, that we need in order to undertake our activities. Because uh, nowadays there is what I usually call digital waste. So not because we have uh, the technology and the availability of more data uh, that uh, uh, those are, are available for us to make our job easier. So it is uh, really important to have a lean approach and define, first of all, the purpose, so what we want to achieve, and then to define uh, which information we, we, we need um, from, from a demand uh, in order to, to, to undertake uh, our, our job. Um, so I think that we can move to the to the next slide. So um, as part of the future of consultancy, um, the the strategy is really looking at the different aspects that has been covered in the previous webinar. Um, so I suggest you also if you missed the, the previous webinar to to listen to those because uh, we're really interested in what has been discussed. So um, it's really important to. Uh, concentrate on the skills and the capabilities and then there is the technology and the innovation uh, part that we cover mainly in the digital transformation group and those should be linked uh, with the business models and, and the contract so you cannot really concentrate in just one area without taking into account also their other aspect so in today webinar is about you know which technology truly add value to what uh, we we create as we know there is a not one size that fit all unfortunately um, the technology is really a, an enabler and uh, so is important not to be uh, just technology centric and to focus everything on technology even if we know that it is sometimes is easier to concentrate and for example buy a tool and and in implement in our in our project and uh, for our business but uh, we need uh, uh, to take into account uh, uh, other aspects that we will discuss uh, today because if we just concentrate on the technology uh, piece the risk of uh, a failure is really high uh, as I think that uh, most of you are, already know. So the, the technology should really be driven by processes and uh, those processes should be governed by policies and protocols. So it is uh, important to start with the process. Uh, so far we see a lot of, uh, you know, uh, policies that is being produced, but uh, is also key to uh, focus on the on the processes, processes of our organization and how we can improve those processes. So we can move to the next slide. And um, you know, before speaking about technology, you know, if we want to concentrate on which technology brings value, is uh, important to start from the value. So what 
what we are looking for. Okay, so for example, to have sustainable project, you know, the, the type of value can be environmental, the social value, the economic value, and how those integrate, which are our priorities, you know, as part of uh, our business. And I think that uh, um, you, uh, for your organization, when you need to select your technology, you think about uh, uh, which are your organization requirements and uh, what you want to achieve and what is value for you. Because uh, we need to remember that uh, what is valuable for you as a company maybe is not the same for another company, is not the same from one client and then another one. So it's really important to understand also the priorities of what we define as, as valuable uh, for us. So it can be the natural, um, natural capital, the manufacturer capital, the financial capital, the human capital, the social capital. So um, it's important to think about, uh, you know, start from your organization and your client organization and to have a clear idea about what the value uh, means to you. And what I, what I, I noted is most of the time people that deal uh, with um, the digital transformation, they maybe they're really on the technical side, but there is, you know, the link uh, uh, to work, for example, with uh, um, other people that have this relationship with our clients and work with them in order to um, to see which are their their pains uh, that we want to to solve uh, with the, with the technology that we will cover later on. So we can move to the next slide. So uh, when we speak about technology, uh, you know, especially uh, in, our, in this situation, uh, there are different technology and then you can uh, categorize them in different ways. So from insight and intelligence, so machine learning, deep learning, advanced analytics, uh, uh, the modeling and simulation. So the digital modeling, what, you know, I, I specialize in particularly in building information modeling, but more and more also the, uh, be, um, the behavior and, and the performance, understand how they, um, the different uh, people, they, they use the space, for example. Also the uh, communication area, uh, IoT, uh, 5G, uh, near field uh, communication, for example, and also immersion, virtual reality, augmented reality, uh, mixed reality, and, and so on. And also there are emerging ones such as data and information, what is computational, blockchain, and, and cybersecurity. This is just to mention um, some of the of the technology. Of course, there are uh, more. But as you can see, you know uh, the um, the scenario is is quite uh, uh, wide. And so, how can we select those technology in order to make value? So, part of the work of the digital transformation uh, group of the IC is. Uh, to help you in in this journey, as as we mentioned, as you mentioned before, so how to select uh, those technologies. So we can move to the next slide. Um, so uh, we will not go in in detail here, but uh, uh, it's important to mention that when we need to analyze different technologies and, and which one to select, it's important to first to check the technology readiness uh, level. So which one we can immediately implement and, and use in our project for our clients, for example, uh, and which one instead is they are at the beginning uh, still has not been um, finalized. So we need to do some uh, um, research and development. First, we needed to run some pilot project and so on. So it's, it's really important uh, not just, uh, you know, to um, also work maybe with some, some startup uh, when you start with this collaboration that is really important, but uh, understand uh, the technology at which level of technology readiness it is. So if we move to the next slide. Um, so, but we, we say that uh, the technology in order to um, bring value on the application of technology, we need to start understanding our customer. And um, so so what? So I wanted to share some practical 
um, advice on uh, um, how to do this. There are different approaches for sure, but um, it's also um, important to have something that, that we can start thinking about. So this is a, a value uh, proposition canvas. So um, I don't know if you are already familiar with it or maybe you are using something similar. But here you can see there are two different uh, aspects. So the um, cycle on the on the right uh, represent uh, the customer profile okay so you can see that uh, one aspect of the customer profile is uh, the the jobs so what um, our customer and you know some somehow the customer can be also internally in your organization or maybe can be external as, as your client what uh, which kind of job they want uh, to get done so what do they want to achieve? So do, do we have a clear idea and clear visibility of which jobs they want to achieve? And uh, once we start to list uh, those jobs, then we need also to think about uh, which are the pains that uh, they are currently uh, facing. So it's really important this discovery piece, because if we just uh, you know, implement a technology, uh, you know, just because maybe it's an hype, so everyone is speaking about uh, machine learning, everyone is speaking about blockchain and so on. But if we don't refer those back to the um, customer profile, then we will not really bring value to to our clients. Okay, so which are our the the pains that uh, they want to avoid that maybe they are facing and they want to avoid, or maybe they they know that they don't want uh, to have. And then on the on the other sides, which are the the gains? So how they measure success? Okay, do we have a clear idea about uh, um, how uh, how uh, we can achieve concrete results for them? So which are their aspiration? What do they do want to achieve that for them will be successful? And again, as we said before how different clients they perceive the value is totally different okay so there might be some um some clients that for them the value is to achieve for example a sustainable uh, project and then it is, is really really key for other instead this is not one of their priorities okay so we need to start from them that so then in order to select our technology so if we then move to the uh, square uh, side um so yeah so if yeah it, it was the the previous slide is still okay to remain on that one yeah perfect so on the on the square you can see that there are the products and the services that we're going to offer with our uh, technology okay uh, and uh, and then we have uh, the game creators okay what uh, that kind of for example technology and solution can offer as as gains and which are the the pain relievers okay what this kind of uh, technology and solution can uh, support and then if you move to, to the next slide that you were um, showing um, so you can see that then is important to match those two because if we have a solution, a technology that, that can provide some gains and some pain relievers, but actually on the other side, we don't have a demand. So we don't have, is not solving any, any pains and is not uh, uh, helping our clients uh, for their success on how they, they measure their they success internally. Um, our technology and our solution will not really add value okay to our customer or internally in our organization so it's really important to take the time to do this exercise in order to um help uh, to achieve value okay so this is a practical example on how we can um, evaluate different technologies so we then move to the to the next slide and there are some example of uh, technology and uh, how those uh, um, has been applied uh, in uh, in Mesa uh, in uh, in my in my group uh, uh, in my team. And uh, there are I think that uh, you know that is, there are different applications available, but some three examples. So the first uh, on virtual reality. 
So on, on those on this project for the clients, it was really important to have uh, um, a visual um, representation of uh, how the, the space uh, look like. And we know that those kind of uh, technology really help uh, and uh, um, the understanding of uh, uh, the, the space and also for training purposes purpose because this is not just simple virtual reality uh, but you can see is an intelligent object that contains different uh, metadata so different information so you can interrogate uh, for example in this case a, a, a light and a piece of furniture and uh, there are information associated uh, so this help also to to train the the maintenance uh, staff in order to understand uh, um, the the environment another example is regarding sensory and iot that is also quite popular so we speak about a lot uh, and on using sensor in our in our building so it's really important to understand what we want to achieve again it's not just to buy the sensor and install in our uh, you know in our um, buildings for example or our infrastructure but uh, is understand which is the problem that we want to solve in this case um, in uh, in our uh, building uh, our main office uh, we wanted uh, to um, check uh, the usage of, of, of the toilet and uh, the difference between different floors and also from different gender um, if there, there was a difference and also to improve our facility team at, at MACE wanted to improve the productivity and provide a better service to, to our colleagues. So you can see here that thanks to the use of, of sensor, it was able to, um, we were able to have this visibility and thanks to, to the power of data, then to take the decision and then to, to go back uh, uh, to to reorganize the, the schedule and have a different strategy on how we can uh, um, deliver a better a better service. And you can imagine now those data are really important, especially nowadays that when um, the um, you know the the cleaning is is be, is is becoming so important in the agenda. So understand if you have a, um, full office, uh, you know which is the um, utilization and how frequently you need to um, take care of of your um, spaces okay and the last example is regarding generative design again this uh, for um, another type of uh, of job we needed to have a quick solution to um to evaluate uh, um taking into account different parameters such as the sustainability the orientation the occupation the uh, quantity of light uh, of different spaces and so on the relation between different spaces a tank Thanks to the use of generative design, our team was able to evaluate uh, a different solution in a very uh, quick uh, time. It is, you know, usually e to do optioneering, it's, it's really, it's really uh, time consuming. So this is uh, um, some example of use of technology, but then we start in understanding what our client or internally in our company was looking for, which were the challenges and how we were able to then add value on the use of, of different technology. So this is mainly um, uh, my my presentation. So I hope that was uh, useful. So I now I think that we can open the the question. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Marcia, and also to Richard. Um, absolutely uh, fascinating. That's a discussion, and, and I think really. Uh, a key topic for us uh, as a, a consultancy sector going forward, but also for our clients. Um, so please uh, feel free to send questions in. I'm sure you've all got any questions uh, for uh, for Richard and Marcia that um, that you would like to be answered. So please encourage everyone to uh, to put your questions into chat. Um, just while we're waiting for those to come in, so I think clearly this this, this sort of digital transformation um, that we're all going through now is is actually one of the biggest opportunities I think and challenges we have as an industry for both uh, for both our clients and our own businesses. And I, and, and I think together with climate change and the drive to net zero, these will be the two biggest global. Uh, uh, trends that most affect our business and I, what I really like about the two presentations today is that 
if we're not careful, we just get too focused on the technology and really not about what, what, what value that technology can bring either to our clients uh, or, or to our own organization. So I think it's a really key topic now that we, we really need to um, think about and engage with. And uh, as Richard and Marty have said, value is different in, e in each organization and the data and how we use that in, in uh, to, to improve our decision making will be will be key. Um, so maybe just while we're questions, I've got a few questions actually. Um, uh, maybe start with Richard, but Marty, please feel free to join in. Um, so Richard, you, you mentioned that um, clients' expectations are, uh, are changing. Uh, and I think I think that's that's a sort of part of part of their own journey and what they see their values are and and how technology can do that. And I'm guessing also through through experience of uh, of working with consultants who are bringing those uh, advice. But what do you see? How can we help um, clients to see the benefits that technology can bring? And also, how can we help them in terms of the the questions or the way they also um, put uh, put RFPs out. So, so again, we can clients can get the benefit, but also in terms of our members, we can really, um, you know, we can we can really get uh, the best uh, the best things into RFPs. So, any thoughts on that, Richard? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, well, first of all, in how can you know we help to bring understanding to the clients? I, I think it, client organisations. Um, uh, within them um, are going through through change. Obviously, it depends on the size of organisation you are working for. Um, you know, my experience tends to be working with the relatively larger size organisations, and and what we find there is that um, you know at the top end, the executives, the leaders, the directors, whoever they are, are becoming increasingly connected to. Um, the idea that they need to be seen not only doing something but seen to be doing something about addressing um, sustainable outcomes and um, we are finding that even investors um, are increasingly adopting um, environment um, sustainability and governance um, as, a, as a methodology so-called ESG um, as a driver um, because they can see that it could potentially the failure against these ESG criteria could lead to a business risk in itself and not only that but above that level we're also seeing that investors um, right up to large-scale investors or institutional investors you know the source of a lot of the money that comes through to new projects are also applying that same thinking in that if they do not see um, you know that these ESG issues and some are mapping it onto the UN Sustainable Development Goals as well um, are being addressed all the way down the line right to the investment and the project itself um, then you know it becomes um, a kind of um, a, a, a red line so it goes right back to the source of the money and this is being recognized by leaders in organizations um, the snag with organizations is that you know the people who might be doing day-to-day -day procurement um, the people that consultants might be talking to um, aren't necessarily completely on board with that message and maybe don't even know what it means to them. So that, um, you know, the thing that, that, that we would really recommend, I would recommend, is that consulting engineers start to go out and talk with confidence um, about these issues to the people they know, um, even if um they think the people they know might be a bit skeptical about it because um uh you know people in in roles around commissioning work around managing work who you know whose ultimate responsibility is just get the job done on time on budget you know it may not be the top of their agenda or front of mind to start to think about sort of outcome based thinking and 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 um environmental uh, sustainable and governance um, issues but within their organizations it's coming down the line so um, I think um, the confidence that this is a real happening thing, I would really recommend that people take that, that those discussions out there, even if they find that they're the ones having to, to introduce it to perhaps direct people that they're dealing with who, who might not have, you know, the same view of the world, let's say, because it's coming down the line through the organizations. And then how do we help them to procure better? So, I mean, in a way, this does go back to the, thought, the origin of thinking in the UK 
in BIM, you know, where there was a lot of leadership, um, you know, going back really probably not far off 10 years now since all this started, the idea of, um, of um, employ, employees in information requirements, which under um, ISO 19650 has now been changed into um, enterprise information requirements, you know, to take account of, um, you know, some linguistic preferences, perhaps about whether people call them employers or not, you know, US terminology and things like this. So, so they've come up with them um, with with um, exchange exchange information requirements, I should say, because um, uh, it's still EIRs and it means basically the same thing. So, so are clients good at producing that and requiring information um, as part of the deliverable? Um, probably not. Um, so, I think this is you know to form an advanced relationship with clients. Um, it's really good to go out and have that conversation with them about what information do they need, you know, at handover as well, and what are they going to do with that information, um, because then it goes on to become useful information over the whole life of the of the asset. So it's like a kind of a more advanced version of helping the client to do proper briefs, you know, and things have been around brief support tools have been around a long time. You know, if you go back to my old field of building services, we used to have the, um, well, we still do have the upgraded Bizria um schedules um you know which break all the way down into in those days specific deliverables using sample drawings um this is what you're going to get but actually trying to move that thinking on to um to information and, and, and data um and then in terms of business models it depends on what you're doing as a business um but we are increasingly starting to take business models out to clients um on a different basis, especially where we're using technology, introducing the idea of, of really um, uh, consultancy as a service um, and uh, onto um, uh, software as a service type offers where you know, we can provide models, uh, we can provide technologies that clients can use um, and getting the value out of those technologies is not necessarily dependent on you know, just um, buying consultancy time. Um, we do always wrap advisory around core products. We don't develop like self-service products, really. Um, but so there is a time element to it. Um, but uh, we're also increasingly looking to get clients to recognize the value of um, through life, live information, um, dashboards and, and um, you know, subscription models um, so that um, we shift them over. That is a slow and long road, I have to say. Um, uh, but we're starting to introduce that to the more kind of forward-thinking clients, um, I would say. Um, so, uh, yeah, those are some thoughts on your question, Craig. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Very, very um, elaborate uh, answer. As you said, lots of uh, lots of um, changes and lots of different ways to to this. Um, just actually, a nice question to follow on. Nice segue, actually. Question from Robert. Um, uh, maybe to Marcia to start with, just yeah, how we how can we convince the unconverted to embrace an outcome-based approach, one with holistic concept of value embedded, and just so we're all clear, it's given the unconverted definition. Those who focus solely on finances and are generally anti-innovation or anti-change. So that really nice question following on from uh, from what Richard was saying. So Marcia, your thoughts on that? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that uh, this um, comes uh, back to the to, to to the skills, and uh, you know we are in an industry as as we as we know that is uh, not famous to be you know active uh, and proactive on on innovation and embracing innovation not just in technology as we mentioned, but also in processes and 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 policies. Um, so I, I think that. Uh, is um, coming back. One one side is uh, um, think about uh, the the person and the audience that we have uh, in front of us and uh, understanding the the skin in the game. So because uh, um, so how uh, the the solution that we can provide to them can really bring value and can empower them uh, because there is this um, barrier most of the time that. Uh, uh, people that they don't want uh, to um, 
undertake and, and to start this digital journey because they're afraid that you know to lose their their power lose their confidence and then because it's something that is uh, outside you know their their current understanding so this is is when the the skills and the and the capabilities uh, you know should be also also improve and and to provide solution that really uh, can um, can can give uh, power and not to re reduce uh, in, in the sense of can, can make their uh, life easier. So in, in that uh, case, uh, if they are um, not convinced on, on the use of, of the technology, it's really to, to understand which which is the, the role and uh, what they do and how this can, can benefit uh, them and their, their organization. Um, and uh, uh, so the, this is one uh, is is one aspect on how we can um, you know convince uh, them on the on their digital journey. Um, another thing is that uh, also uh, the the finance. So is this uh, an um, additional cost? So so you know when we speak about building information modeling, there's been a lot of uh, uh, discussion you know the, how we can measure the, the the value and the and the benefits and uh, uh, the answer is not only straightforward to understand which is the the return of investment and uh, also from a financial uh, point of view um, but uh, as as we as we discussed also previously the the value most of the time uh, are not just uh, uh, quantitative so you need to have this holistic uh, view on how uh, those solution can can bring value and how to um, those can be can can be measured. Um, so I don't know if I answer uh, the, the question, but this is to add uh, some some thought on 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 this. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's a it's a key question for us all at the moment. So whether we're Consultants trying to convert convert the unconverted, or whether whether it's clients who are really looking to uh, to um, really define the, the value and the that they um, that they want. And I think we all we all have a a key role to play in that. Um, so just just while waiting for the questions, maybe just picking up in that, on on that. Uh, on that theme, then. So, so obviously, what 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 happens if the if the value changes or the need from the company or the client changes? How do we how do we deal with that? Because it's all a bit of a a learning process, as you say. Um, I like your um, slide you showed earlier, Marty, about 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 focusing on the outcomes and the jobs to be done, etc. Recognize those uh, those things that. Uh, that we use ourselves, but but what what happens if the value changes? How do we deal with that? Yeah, yeah. Uh, thank you, Craig. is is a very good question because uh, you know it's not that you do uh, this exercise once and then you are you are done. So also you know using this sort of uh, canvas also from visually to have a clear idea about uh, how your solution can bring value to your customer. This really can help, but uh, is is really a good question. But what what happen if if you know how to monitor also uh, the the different needs that can evolve uh, during during the time and also taking into account the um, environment that may be changing and so the, the demand can uh, can can vary. So it is really important to have uh, an in in iteration of this approach so uh, to you know monitor and to have this relation with the with the customer and and to to repeat uh, this exercise in order to make sure that our products and our service uh, are still uh, um on you know they are um answering to a question that is still relevant now and in can be in the in, in the future so we need to have uh, you know we speak about agile you know to having this sort of agile approach uh, and uh, where we can you know reiterate uh, uh, test the the solution and then uh, to to monitor um the the situation so the, the approach that i showed is something that should be repeated over the time Okay, thank you. Yeah, I think it's a, as you say, it's good to to test this and to uh, and to keep um, to keep uh, 
iterating as we go. Um, just um, to have any more questions, I've just got maybe one more question um, for me, and then and then we wrap up if we don't have anything. So, question, final question to Richard. Then, so uh, we mentioned about um, the readiness or or the maturity of technology, and uh, you know, in, for I guess for clients, but also for consultants, but maybe a question related to our business to our members. So, how can how can companies evaluate the, the sort of red, the, the readiness or maturity of technology and, and what to invest in now that can be ready implemented versus um, what to think about um, developing for the future? So how can they uh, how can they evaluate that? So what advice would you give and maybe where where can companies get advice from in this area? Yeah, yeah, thanks, Craig. And where to get advice from is is difficult um, uh, because there's obviously quite a lot of push coming from quite a large number of technology suppliers, both the the established ones that we know and love, um, and uh, the newer ones on the block. Um, and uh, they do obviously come forward with a proposition which is um, perhaps sounds as if it's more advanced than. Than it really is. So um, a structure around testing technology is, is essential, um, and uh, we tend to use um, uh, a methodology a little bit around the idea of, um, of the innovation framework that we've been applying um, inside the group to look at technology readiness, um, and um, you know we tend to look at, at it in a way where we try things out in a structured way. Um, so hopefully with technology suppliers, you know, this can be something which can be done in partnership with them um, and not necessarily with any substantial financial commitment apart from the fact that the willingness to try. Um, the definition of, of a pilot project, clear definition of what you mean by a pilot project, what is it intended to achieve and how can you measure its success against those um, intended um, outcomes just of the pilot itself. Um, and then uh, run pilot um, in a kind of contained way um, with risks around identified and if necessary even in parallel with a conventional process um, if you're in a situation where there's an unacceptable risk to piloting something um, you know which is maybe on a live project where the client doesn't want to um, uh, pilot something you haven't tried before so you might need to do it in parallel or you might pilot something in conjunction with a, with a client where you say, well, let's try this new technology to address your specific problem and look at it together. Um, but the important thing is to run the pilot in a structured way um, to enable you to determine the impact of the technology. So specifically avoid overlapping pilots or overlapping technology trials so that you don't can't really figure out which one is having what, what kind of impact. Um, and then get through that in a structured way in what we would call a kind of... Um, uh, incubate stage of um, innovation process um, and if you get through the pilot um, successfully you've still got another investment to be made um, in terms of um, you know system integration itself um, so there are quite I, I mean the, the key thing um, for me in looking at adopting a new technology and perhaps trying to assess where it is on the technology readiness level um, independently of, uh, of what the, um, the vendors might be saying is to you know to introduce it in a structured managed way step by step um, with risk managed around the application defined um, stages of piloting uh, with defined outcomes that can be actually uh, measured against readiness to drop it if it doesn't seem right you know rather than just keep laboring on trying to use it um, avoid overlapping technologies and specifically i would also recommend that whether you're big or small move towards standardization get the experts involved from the relevant practices whatever it is you're doing designing you know um, get the specialists involved and try to get into the world of um, standardized process and standardized technologies so that when you do invest in adopting something new um, you know you can get the return on that investment basically yeah that's great really really sound advice there, as you say trying to get yeah standardize as much as you can and do it in a, in a step stage process um, and then also if you do have opportunity with your clients to co-create co-develop then i think that's another good uh, good way to do it where people can both uh, both see the benefits and the outcomes of that 
process. So, so thank you very much. Um, if there's no more questions, I think we're, we're nearly out of time. So uh, many thanks for listening. Uh, we hope you found this, uh, this interesting. Um, you can replay the previous webinars on the AC website uh, and the websites, um, website shared on the screen now with the links, etc. cetera. Um, thanks very much to our guests today, Richard Sherman and Dr. Marcio Lobran. Thank you all for your time. Uh, just a reminder that we've recorded this webinar and we'll send the link uh, later today so you can refer back to it or forward to colleagues. And we'll also add the slides to the ACE webinar, website. So enjoy the rest of your day and we hope to see you again soon. Thank you very much, everyone.